Welcome back. We just created a getter for the number of floor nodes in the floor uh, in the floor node class. So we have get node count, which returns floor node count. And this is a static function and floor node count is a static variable. Now we're ready to start the partitioning algorithm. And so back in the floor class, we have our void function called partition. And this is going to be called when we want to split our floor into a bunch of different nodes. So in floor.cpp, we have our uh, partition function here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a floor node. Now, the floor node that we're going to create, remember, floor node has two constructor overloads. And one of them takes an f corner coordinates f struct or struct. And this contains upper left x, y, and lower right x and lower right y. So what do I want what I want to do is in partition, I'd like to create an f corner coordinates. And let's create call this corner coordinates a. And because this is a struct that belongs in the floor node class, we need to include the floor node class at the top. Include floor node dot h. Now we have this corner coordinates and what I'd like to do is initialize it with an initializer list. And it's going to simply take four integers. So the upper left X and upper left Y can be zero because I'd like to start the, the basically the starting point to be zero. And then for the lower right X and the lower right Y, I'm going to pass in floor grid size X and floor grid size y. Now if you'll recall, floor has these floor grid size x and floor grid size y variables. And we need to initialize these with default variables um, and in that way we'll be able to to have default values for this. So in floor.cpp in the constructor, let's go ahead and initialize these. So let's say floor grid size x and let's set it equal to 5 by default. And floor grid size y, let's set that equal to 5 by default. And the reason I'm using 5 is because back here in the editor we have already this mesh that's 5 by 5 if we consider the grid size of a single square to be 200 by 200. So for now we'll use 5. Now we might as well also uh, use the room or initialize the room min x and y. And so let's do that. I'm going to set those equal to 1 just because I want the minimum uh, size that a room can be split in the x and y to be one grid, one grid square. So that goes, go ahead, goes ahead and takes care of initializing that. Now in the partition function, we have our uh, corner coordinates for the, uh, wh what I'm going to basically refer to as A, which is the very first floor node, which will be basically the entire room, the entire floor that we're going to split up. That's why it goes from 0, 0 at the top left to the final, the, the complete floor grid size uh, in the X and Y. So we're going to take our floor node stack. We're going to call the push function. Remember T array has the push function and what this will take is an element to, to put in here and we're going to push a T shared pointer of type floor node and it's going to be um, basically constructed using new floor node and we're going to use the constructor that takes a corner coordinates. So corner coordinates A just like that. Now before when we constructed a floor node, uh, what we did was we simply said t shared pointer floor node and we created a variable, a local variable like this called node and we initialized it like that. But what we can do is create without even, we can, we can create one, an anonymous floor node without even naming it, without giving it a uh, variable, a local variable name, because all we're doing is pushing it directly into the stack. And so that's what we're doing here. Okay, so in partition, all we do is create a uh, new corner coordinates and we use that to construct a new floor node. 
and we are using the T-shared pointer to wrap that and we're pushing that into the floor node stack. So what we need now, now that we have our first node in the stack, is we need to start our algorithm while loop. So we're going to have a while loop and what it's going to do is going to loop until the floor node stack is empty. So we're going to say floor node stack and remember this is a T array so it has the dot num function and we're going to check to make sure that that's still greater than zero. So we'll keep performing the while loop as long as this is not empty. As long as floor node stack dot num is greater than zero, there's still nodes in the stack. And what are we going to do while there's still nodes in the stack? Well, I'd like to take make a T shared pointer of type floor node called A and that's going to be floor node stack dot pop. And what does pop do? It pops the element off the stack and returns it. And so it's going to pop the T shared pointer that points to this new floor node we created off the stack and store it in A. And this is what we're going to do uh, over and over again until there's nothing left in the stack. And so, so far, this is pretty simple. We're not splitting anything yet, but just to make sure it's working, why don't we use a UE log and we're going to just say popping, popping a floor node off the stack. Okay. And now in procedural room, what we can do is we can delete all this other stuff that we did. I'm going to also comment, uh, actually, I'm going to just delete out the other functions in begin play. And I'm going to simply create a new floor. So I'm going to make a T shared pointer for floor. So we don't have to worry about mem memory management. And of course, I'm going to need to include the floor type. So include floor dot h and we're going to call this the floor and it's going to be uh, we're going to use new floor like so and now we have our floor okay so we have our floor and we're going to simply call the floor partition So what this does is simply calls the partition function and if we go back to floor and let's see what I have here. I have a syntax error here. And so the reason we're getting this, um, this error here is because we have a name conflict. Now procedural room, if you go back to procedural room.h, you'll see that we have a U static mesh component called floor. And so we can't have that and also have a floor type. There's a, a name a name collision. So what we're going to need to do is call this uh, something else. And I'm going to call it floor, uh, floor mesh. That should be, um, that should be fine. And in procedural room.cpp in the constructor, we have floor mesh instead of floor. And that way this will not conflict with that, that name. So we set the root component to floor mesh as well. And, um, just so we don't get any confusion inside the engine because it's already associated this name floor component with a particular class and now we're changing the name. I'm going to change the name here as well. So I'm going to call this just floor mesh here. Uh, okay. And then we have the floor and we're going to call the floor partition. And let's compile and see how this works. Okay, so we're back in the engine and you'll see one thing right off the bat, the floor is gone and that's because the floor mesh, we went ahead and changed the name of it, which means we, it's essentially the same as taking that, that floor variable and deleting it and adding a new one called floor mesh. So if we go back into our blueprints and find our procedural room BP, you'll see that uh, we don't have the mesh anymore. It's now just called floor mesh. And so we can choose our, our mesh for this. So uh, we can go ahead and find our floor mesh 
that we were using. I don't, I think it was the template map floor. I think that's what it, what it was. Uh, so there we go, we've got it again, and um, that will take care of that. Now we can go ahead and open the output log and hit play, and you'll see now we've created the floor. We've created the floor node, that's in the partition function. In the partition function, we call popping the floor node off the stack, that's inside the while loop. And then finally, we destroy the floor node because it's going out of scope. Uh, the T-shared pointer, anyway, is going out of scope. And then finally, the floor gets destroyed, and that is because we created the floor inside of begin play, and we used a T-shared pointer. So now that begin play is ending, that floor gets destroyed. So this is a good overall um, skeleton to our algorithm. We know that we can create the floor uh, basically dynamically using a shared pointer and then it will be destroyed on its own after begin play so we don't have to worry about the cleanup for that. And then of course in our partition function we know that our uh, oh, let's, let's find it here, partition, we know that we are creating a floor node that's the first original floor node, actually it's uh, the one that we create here that we push into the stack and then we use the while loop to uh, actually um, pop the node off of the stack. Now, just so you are aware, when we created this floor node here, we called the floor node uh, constructor, which increments that static floor node count, so there's one floor node in existence. But then here, we created this t-shared pointer floor node A, and uh, we are popping one off the stack, and we are setting the A pointer to point to that. So the question arises, what is the floor node count right here? Well, let's go ahead and put a UE log just to make sure we understand how many floor nodes there are in existence right here. So let's say floor nodes in existence in the while loop percent D and we're going to use floor node get node count that's the static function and let's go ahead and just find out okay and we'll go back and hit play and it says floor nodes in existence while in while loop one and that's because we're not creating a new floor node here we're just creating the pointer and we're setting it to point to the floor node that was on the stack we popped it off and we're setting A to point to it. So very important to know uh, how many nodes there are at a given point in time, even though they're all automatically deleted. Okay, so that is going to uh, conclude this video. Uh, we have our partition function. We got it sort of, uh, so we're starting to flesh it out. All we're doing so far is we're creating a new floor node, pushing it on the stack, and then we start our while loop, which will loop through until the stack is empty and it'll just keep popping things off the stack and that's all it's doing and we just have a UE log showing us that. Next we're going to actually continue with this algorithm and see about actually starting to split nodes into smaller nodes and then by the end of it we should have a stack filled, not this stack but the other stack, not floor node stack but the partitioned floor stack. This should be filled with a bunch of split up nodes and then we can draw those as rectangles to the screen and spawn items in them. So stay tuned. See you in the next video.